Hello, good morning everyone. Welcome to the 2017 Breastfeeding Forum Press Conference. Welcome to the 7,107 islands of the Philippines. So how about a big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen? As we celebrate breastfeeding and life around the world, our theme for this year's ASEAN uh, Breastfeeding Forum, ASEAN Ugnayan, one community protecting, promoting, and supporting breastfeeding. Now, I have the honor to introduce to you our distinguished members of the panel, starting with, of course, the Department of Health Secretary, Dr. Pauline Jean Rosel Ubial. Our country representative for the Philippines of the UNICEF, Ms. Lotta Silwander. Hello, ma'am. And our country representative for the Philippines World Health Organization, Dr. Gundo Aurel Weiler. And last but not the least, Dr. Ferdinand Fernando, Assistant Director and Head of Health Division, Human Development Doctorate for the ASEAN Secretariat. All right. To start this press, this press conference, we now have the opening statement by the Health Secretary, Dr. Pauline Jean Rosel Ubial. Hello. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, this forum, which is the uh, celebration of the 50th uh, anniversary of ASEAN, uh, the ASEAN Breastfeeding Forum is aligned with one of the six thematic priorities of our chairship, which is a people-oriented, a people-centered ASEAN. This commemorative activity is relevant and aligned to ASEAN leaders' declaration on ending all forms of malnutrition proposed by the Philippines to be adopted by our leaders in the 31st summit this coming November here in Manila. This is a rich opportunity for ASEAN member states with its diverse culture to discuss breastfeeding and proper infant and young child feeding practices in the region's economy as the region's economy progresses. For the Philippines, the collective learnings and insights we will acquire from this forum will contribute to the realization of the Philippine Health Agenda 2016 to 2022, wherein our battle cry is all for health towards health for all. Underpinning the concept that health is everyone's concern and that we should continually engage and create partnerships to build strong health systems and achieve universal health care but especially for the poor and marginalized with the concept of leaving no one behind. And in recent uh, weeks, we have discussed in the Department of Health what we call the last mile strategy, meaning that uh, in 2016, we have already covered 91% of the Philippine population to be covered by our national health insurance program. So we are looking at strategies to actually reach the unreached populations of this country. Also, um, to uh, scale up the strategies like breastfeeding promotion and infant and young child feeding programs to the portions of the populations that have so far not been reached. This focus on drawing the strength of multi-sectoral strategy to get things done underpins the health sector reforms that we are doing here in the Philippines. Not surprisingly, this is the core message being conveyed by the forum's theme, ASEAN Ugnayan, or Connection. One community promoting, supporting, and protecting breastfeeding. By forming connections, we create a network of resources that enable the exchange of technical expertise 
that we can adopt to better serve our nation and create a safe and sustainable environment that will enable children to thrive. Breastfeeding is not just about telling mothers to breastfeed and keep it exclusive for six months, continuing it until the child reaches two years of age. There are also investments involved, from building structures that allow spaces for mothers and children. Uh, you can see them in malls, in airports, seaports, and other areas, the breastfeeding stations. Educating and building the capacity of communities from mothers up to legislators to protect, promote, and support breastfeeding and safe and sustainable infant and young child feeding practices. And the enforcement of laws that support the nutrition of mothers and children. For example, our uh, executive order number 51, which is the marketing practices for breast milk substitutes. And also, the national policy on human milk banking and mobilizing community-based breast milk donation and other infant and young child feeding national policies on protection, promotion, and support for infant and young child feeding and breastfeeding. We have also the national guidelines on nutrition of women of reproductive age, focusing on prenatal, pre-pregnancy, pregnancy, and postpartum and lactation periods. We train national and local government hospital personnel in the integrated approach on maternal, newborn, health and nutrition services for care, uh, health care providers started in institutional arrangement, implementation, and monitoring of breastfeeding in the workplace. Early this year, we conducted capacity building of our stakeholders and partners for monitoring and evaluation of the efficient implementation of legal mandates such as Executive Order 51 or the Breastfeeding Law or Milk Code of the Philippines and Republic Act 10028 or the Expanded Breastfeeding Promotion Act of 2009. We also conducted a course for our regional assessors and hospital personnel on the essential maternal and newborn care and lactation management. Later this year, we will focus on non-traditional health partners, such as the occupational health nurses, the human resource managers, the civil service commission, and train them on lactation management in the workplace. Also, the Department of Labor and Employment developing a manual of operations on integrated child health and nutrition delivery. The ASEAN Breastfeeding Forum gathers all of us to reflect on how our current health and governance systems can more integrative towards women and children's health and nutrition by learning from the successes and challenges of each country. Much of our attention has to be tuned to the uh, turn to looking at mothers and children as one unit until the little ones are raised to their full potential to become productive members and citizens of this country, thus reducing malnutrition among our children and the general population. So together, we can achieve a healthier progressive, and safer Philippines and ASEAN. Thank you. Thank you so much, Secretary Ubiol. Good morning, everyone. I'm Asek Eric Tayak, also with the Department of Health. Indeed, when Secretary Ubiol states that no one should be left behind, 
We can see images even as far as in the Marari, Marawi crisis-affected areas of women continuing breastfeeding even in evacuation centers. How about that? Okay. Okay. May I present to you now for her statement, Ms. Lota Silwander, the country representative for the Philippines, UNICEF. Ms. Lota Silwander, please. Um, thank you very much, uh, Asik Tayak. Um, I think it's very encouraging to hear the secretary mention leaving no one behind. Um, and in that sense, I think we have a lot to do uh, in the Philippines. We have a lot of people who live in, uh, in geographically isolated areas. We have indigenous people who live also far. We also have communities that for one reason or another feel or are discriminated by not being able to access services and, uh, and, and government programs. But I'd like to start with uh, the sort of bigger picture. Um, the Philippines, as so many other countries, most countries in the world in fact, have signed on to the new uh, sustainable development goals. They are 17. Among them, uh, there are many sub-goals, but one important one that we need to remind ourselves of today is that uh, one says ending preventable deaths for, uh, for children under five and to reduce uh, stunting and wasting of children under five. So with that, we have recognized that this is a global problem it's a global issue that we need to deal with. Um, it is also, unfortunately, a problem that we need to deal with in, um, in ASEAN, in the ASEAN region, and very much so also in the Philippines. Uh, so globally, 160 million children are stunted, meaning that they will never grow uh, to their full length, but they will also never grow um, cognitively, intellectually, to their full potential. We know that children who are stunted um, finish school earlier, drop out. Their grades are not as good as other children's. They often also don't achieve um, very good in their professional life as adults. And they are most likely to earn about 50% less than other adults in their adult life. So uh, it is not only an issue for the individual child, it's also an economic issue for nations. Also 50 million children are wasted, um, meaning that they, are, they could be tall, but they're, they're probably very, very skinny and have been malnourished um, acutely or for a long time. So, uh, and also undernutrition, whatever uh, kind of undernutrition, is associated with f about 45% of deaths for children under five. This is a global picture, but we also know that, that those 45% actually can, uh, can be used for the Philippines as well. So if we did something about undernutrition in children under five, we would actually save a lot of childs because those children would be able to survive the illness, the diarrhea, the pneumonia, whatever they are ill from, and not die. Um, in ASEAN, we, there are five countries with high stunting rates, and Philippines being one of them. There are estimates that nationally about between 30 to 35% of children are stunted. In Mindanao, it's much higher than that. Stunting rates are up to 45%. And one of the main causes of stunting is the lack of consistent breastfeeding, uh, exclusive breastfeeding during the first six months. If you establish uh, exclusive breastfeeding for a child, in the first six months, you have a very uh, good basis for the health of that child. And so um, we also know that, that 
the benefits of breastfeeding have been distorted. We have milk companies that produce uh, milk powder uh, that, should, that they promote to be given to infants and older children as, uh, as, as, as instead of, of, of being breastfed. And um, they also advertise the benefits of this powder as being better than breast milk. Now, let there be no confusion about this. Breast milk is better. Even if a mother is malnourished, the breast milk that she can give her baby is better than any powder that has ever been produced in this world. So we need really to fight the disinformation around uh, the powdered milk that children are being uh, fed in, in the Philippines and in the ASEAN region. Um, we also need to promote that children are being breastfed very early on. That is the first hour of their life. <coughs> because the so-called colostrum, which the mother produces early on, uh, before she actually starts breastfeeding regularly, is almost like a, a immunization for the child. It contains so many important and vital things for that child to improve its health, to resist infections, uh, and, and so on. So the colostrum is, is the best medicine that any child could get. And if you miss that opportunity, you can be fairly sure that the child will be uh, uh, subject to quite a number of infections. So again, breastfeeding is best, <clears throat> no matter what. Thank you. Um, and also to continue breastfeeding for six months. No mixing, no powder, no water, no other foods, no diluted rice water or whatever it is popular. Uh, I've even seen mothers um, feed their infants Red Bull. Uh, this is really, really... Uh, but the reason for that, of course, is the misconception of what children need and uh, what mothers should be giving or fathers should be giving them. So please do let us help us promote breastfeeding because it is really the best. Uh, I mentioned in my speech earlier a figure of globally, there is an estimate that if we invested 570 million US dollars in promoting breastfeeding so that the breastfeeding rates would go up, um, it would actually uh, mean that we invested uh, 4.7 dollars. Uh, in each child who is not being breastfed at the moment. And that would, that investment would result in a gain or a return on the investment of $35. So any banker in the world would say that is a really good investment. We hope also that governments around the world would say this is an unbeatable investment. Let's promote breastfeeding and let's put the money that is needed for that so that we can enhance um, the lives of our children and the lives of our nations. And we see two breastfed children walking in with their mothers here. It's, it's wonderful. So um, I thank you again for being here. I thank ASEAN as an organization uh, promoting breastfeeding as really a fundamental part of children's well-being and of the nation's well-being. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lada Silvan. How about that, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> only breastfeeding. It's the impact is not only during the breastfeeding years. It goes beyond. The challenge to reverse our stunting rates is up to us. And so we want to hear more from the country representative for the Philippines, the World Health Organization. Let's welcome Dr. Gundo Aurel Weiler. Thank you. <clears throat> Good morning, colleagues from the media. Um, 
It's great to be here at this event, and it's an honor for me to say a few words on behalf of the World Health Organization. Uh, from, from a health perspective, it's really rare to find an intervention that offers such a big benefit for no cost or very low cost investment. Breastfeeding, it is clear, is uh, good for babies. It's actually a life-saving intervention. Uh, a lot of numbers have already been mentioned. Uh, I just want to add one of those uh, estimate of the, the global scale. If we were to expand breastfeeding to the optimal level, we could save a, the life of 800,000 children per year under five years of age. So just to add one of the numbers, but it's not only about uh, saving the life of babies, as has been just mentioned, while they're breastfed. It's really setting them up to uh, develop their full development potential for the rest of their life. Breastfeeding is good for mothers, not only to bond with the baby, but it has also an impact for the rest of the mother's life because we know that mothers who have breastfed their babies will be at lower risk, particularly for non-communicable diseases such as cancer and diabetes for the rest of their life. Breastfeeding is good for the family because it helps the family save uh, unnecessary expenses uh, both for infant formula, uh, which is not really needed, but also then for healthcare costs, because we know that babies that have not been breastfed will be more sick than babies who were breastfed. Yet it's really difficult to make that shift, and uh, we see that in many of the countries who are now participating and uh, in this forum for the three days to exchange experience. We see that in the Asia region, uh, to give uh, one other figure, uh, after one year uh, after birth, there are only one in five countries in Asia that can report that their breastfeeding rate is still at 80%. It's one of the key indicators. And uh, we, we have in the globally an average of one in four countries. So Asia has fallen behind the global average, unfortunately, in terms of breastfeeding. And some of the leading regions in the world have already managed to increase that number to every second country. Now, there are multiple reasons for this, and, and many of them will be discussed here. But I think uh, one of them is, and we've discussed that in the opening forum, is that still too many people believe in the superiority of uh, artificial products and of infant formula, which, of course, is a belief that is supported by marketing strategies and, and interests of industry. And we've seen that in the example of the Maravi conflict, that uh, uh, when we want to do something for the displaced populations, many people suggested, well, let's give infant uh, formula and donate this. We, of course, there's a general belief that it would be good, but the contrary is the case, especially in those uh, circumstances that we are uh, experiencing now. It is important to encourage and maintain breastfeeding because there is no substitute to breastfeeding uh, as my colleague Lotta Silvander has mentioned so eloquently. Um, so the Philippines is doing a lot uh, to support uh, breastfeeding and to address the suboptimal rates of breastfeeding here in the country. Really want to uh, congratulate the Department of Health and the personal commitment also of the secretary uh, who's been a long-standing advocate to increase uh, breastfeeding here in the country. Um, but it is clear that uh, it is not a, a job that we can just uh, uh, put on the responsibility of mothers alone, even not the health sector alone, but we need a, a change of culture. We need to make sure that breastfeeding becomes the new normal in the Philippines and all the other ASEAN countries. And uh, we all have a role to play in this. I think it's very important that we have this forum for the three days where people come together and exchange experience internationally and uh, I'm particularly looking forward to the uh, attempt to organize a, a new Guinness world record, I understand, on Saturday through a simultaneous breastfeeding of uh, 2,000 uh, mothers and their infants. Um, and we also support uh, strongly the uh, call for action that will be um, uh, ratified here at this forum by the ASEAN countries. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Weiler. Dr. Weiler mentioned about the big event this Saturday at the Smart Aranete Coliseum. That is the big latch. 
So we hope to see everyone on Saturday. And because this is the 50th year of the Ashen, it is but fitting that we hear words from the Assistant Director and Head of the Health Division, the Human Development Doctorate for the Ashen Secretariat. Let's welcome Dr. Ferdinand Fernando. Thank you, Dr. Eric. And again, uh, a great appreciation and congratulations to uh, Philippines through the Department of Health for uh, the successful conduct of this ASEAN Breastfeeding Forum. Uh, the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, or ASEAN, an intergovernmental organization composed of 10 member states, uh, through the ASEAN health sector and through the ASEAN post-2015 health development agenda, prioritizes the promotion of a good nutrition and healthy diet, including breastfeeding. In fact, this is one of the 20 health priorities included in the ASEAN Post-2015 Health Development Agenda that the ASEAN Health Ministers has, have endorsed in uh, 2014. And uh, a proof of that concept in terms of the ministerial, health ministerial level commitment as well as political commitment is the initiative that is being led by Philippines through the Department of Health in uh, achieving and uh, getting a high level political commitment in ending all forms of malnutrition. In fact, we have a uh, proposed or upcoming ASEAN Leaders Declaration on ending all forms of malnutrition that will be proposed or elevated to the 31st ASEAN summit this November for the adoption of the 10 ASEAN leaders. In fact, as mentioned uh, with uh, Secretary Obial, the 10 ASEAN health ministers already endorsed this uh, declaration, the ASEAN leaders declaration in ending all forms of malnutrition, and it will be further elevated to the ASEAN summit this November for their uh, adoption. With that political commitment, it would now be translated into concrete regional action or action programs, action uh, activities. And definitely the ASEAN health sector through its health ministers and senior officials and uh, other technical uh, officials will be uh, monitoring the progress of the implementation or operationalization of this declaration uh, next year. And I think uh, there will be a multi-stakeholder. There's a proposed multi-stakeholder and multi-sectoral uh, consultation uh, next year to operationalize these declarations once it is adopted by the ASEAN Summit leaders. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Fernando. Now we're opening this portion to the questions and answers. For those who wish to provide the questions, please give us your name the organization you represent, and please direct your question to, the, to any of our dignitaries seated here in front. Who wants to begin breastfeeding? <laughs> okay, over here. Yes, Icon. Yes, Secretary, and to Ms. Gundewiler, uh, Sir Gundewiler, to Ma'am Lota. I'd um, just like to ask, as what Secretary has presented a while ago in the forum, you've mentioned that last 2013, there are 49% breastfeeding penis, and as of 2015, there are 77. As of now, ma'am, how do you target to make it 100% since marami pa rin pong gumagamit ng formula milks po sa bansa natin? Uh, as uh, mentioned, our initiation rate to breastfeeding has increased from about 52% to currently it's 77%. So it's a big leap already. And I think much of the uh, increase in uh, initiation is due to the fact that we have uh, moved from home delivery, from promoting home deliveries to facility-based deliveries. And we've promoted the uh, uh, education and capacity building of our frontline health workers, those that attend to uh, deliveries, to actually provide the uh, 
uh, unang yakap or essential intrapartum newborn care, EINC. So it's a package that uh, happens during delivery. So when mothers deliver, they are provided this package uh, which we call unang yakap and part of the uh, four essential steps for that is the early uh, initiation to breastfeeding or latch on. And uh, uh, what we are uh, alarmed about is still, because they started breastfeeding during delivery, it's the continuing breastfeeding after that because the rates are still very low for the exclusive breastfeeding of up to six months. It's 52% um, zero to six months, but uh, beginning four to five months, it's going down to about 28%. So a lot of uh, the challenges that we face here is the marketing practices of breast milk substitute. They often market the breast milk substitute or the formula as better or equal to breast milk. So we're working with FDA to really uh, control the advertising of this uh, uh, breast milk substitute or formula. And we are now working with non-traditional partners so that uh, particularly working women who are breastfeeding are provided a supportive environment. So not only the health workers, but also the Civil Service Commission, for example, the Department of Labor and Employment, so that they will have uh, spaces in the workplace so that women can actually breastfeed if they cho choose to or can extract the breast milk in the workplace. And um, I think uh, a lot of the effort is also on educating the would-be mothers, so that is in the elementary and high school education, to introduce... Uh, uh, in the curriculum that breastfeeding is uh, is the default uh, nutrition for children. It's not an option. It's the natural and most um, acceptable uh, feeding practice for young infants. So ang nangyari kasi because of the advertising and promotion of breast milk substitute, Breastfeeding has been the minority and formula and bottle feeding has been the normative. No? So yun yung change natin and we're looking at introducing all these concepts in elementary and high school. Thank you, Secretary. Uh, you have a follow-up question? Yes, as a part of that, Secretary, what strategies will you be doing? Are you going to propose an executive order or any measures po with regards to the health sector when it comes to the promotion of those um, substitute milks in, in the market? Po? Uh, we actually don't need an executive order because there are republic acts already. We resort to an executive order when there is no existing law or uh, Republic Act that passed through Congress and Senate. Marami na po tayong, we have a lot of Republic Acts uh, supporting uh, breastfeeding. In fact, the latest one is uh, was just passed in 2009, the 10028, the Expanded Breastfeeding Promotion Act. So it's a matter of just implementing this law. Yes, please. Hi, Secretary. Uh, you mentioned that this forum will, will also be uh, an exchange of uh, best practices among the ASEAN countries. Uh, 
what are the best practices that you, that you want to, co to copy or imitate from them or you can learn from them? I still don't know. I have to hear the conference. So I don't know if uh, the other panelists have best practices from other countries. Well, like, like, like uh, Secretary uh, Biel said, it's, it's difficult to say at this point because we haven't been through the conference yet. But I think one of the things that will come up is human milk banks as a good practice. Uh, so children have the right to receive uh, breast milk, although their mothers might find it difficult or can't breastfeed. But we can then, through a, a human milk bank, they could still be given breast milk, which really is so much better than formula, even if it's not from your own mother. And so I think that's one good practice. We do have, as far as I know, three human milk banks in, in the Philippines at this moment. Uh, and there are upcoming ones in, in, in other countries. I know Vietnam, for example. So that's one good practice, um, I think. Um, another good practice um, and which I think promotes directly and indirectly breastfeeding is maternity leave. Although maternity leave has been increased in the Philippines, the ideal would of course be to, ha to allow mothers to uh, have paid maternity leave for six months. To my knowledge, Vietnam is the only country in the region that has that, but I might be wrong. That is definitely a good practice, and I think uh, the, you know, the countries in the ASEAN region could look at that again. And the, the phenomenal return of that kind of investments, uh, have we, I don't have the numbers, but it, it, it is and will be a long-term um, return of that kind of investment. So if, if Vietnam can do it, I'm sure many other countries in the region can follow on a six-month maternity leave. So those are the few of the good practices that directly and indirectly promote breastfeeding. So let's together discover the best practices in the region. They're outside this uh, where we are conducting the press conference are information from participating countries and we urge you to visit this site so that uh, we can learn from them. And if you, can attend, if you have attended um, uh, meetings, then that will be good for all of us. And the Department of Health will share these uh, best practices in the coming days. Yes, you have a question. To Secretary Obial, I'm Ria Fernandez of PTV4. Um, Sec, how is the Philippines performing when it comes to breastfeeding practice compared to other ASEAN countries? And to reverse the question of my colleague, what uh, best practices can we share during the forum to our neighbors? I don't think we're comparing very well with other ASEAN countries. Uh, our, our breastfeeding rates are low. Our um, formula feeding is increasing, I'm sorry to say, from 19.8% uh, um, use of breast milk substitutes in 2013 to 22%. So it's increasing by um, uh, year 2015. And um, already a high proportion of children are uh, weaned off in terms of uh, continuing breastfeeding up to two years old. They're already stopped from uh, getting breast milk at 12 months to 23 months. Okay, from 8%, it increased to 13.8%. So uh, we're not a good uh, example in this region. But our best practices, and that shows also in outcome indicators like malnutrition rate is also very high in the country. 
about uh, 22% of our under five are wasted, and about 31% are stunted. So, not very good. But our best practice in this particular area is actually uh, engaging uh, the whole of society and the non-traditional health partners in the promotion of a supportive environment for breastfeeding, like uh, the labor sectors, the civil service commission, the occupational health nurses, and human resource managers. And then we're also uh, promoting an increase of health literacy among Filipinos. So this is uh, one of the initiatives that we started this year. It's empowering Filipinos to get uh, health information from reliable sources. And uh, we've launched the Philippine Health TV, wherein we're providing LED TVs to all health centers and barangay health stations and hospital nationwide with our uh, um, uh, locally or in-house production of information education materials of the Department of Health. And the first few materials that we produce is the breastfeeding check. Tama, sapat, at <coughs> exclusivo check uh, that we have actually disseminated to uh, most areas of the country. Um. Sec, last from my end, how long or how long is the ideal period of breastfeeding? Yes, I, ideally, uh, initiation should be started within one hour after birth. And then uh, exclusive breastfeeding, meaning no other substance will be provided, not even water or vitamins to the infant up to six months and continued breastfeeding up to two years and beyond. So you can breastfeed even beyond two years old. Okay, more questions for the panel. Hello, doctor. Hello to the panel. I am Nadine Casino from the Modern Nanais of Mindanao. We are, the, um, we are the breastfeeding peer support group back in Cagayan de Oro. And we are, the, I think, the mothers who, who are affected by the um, lack of information and all those things. And because of these um, gaps, that is why we have formed and made sure that our mothers become supported. You did say that um, mothers need um, education and access to informed choices. But then, on our experience, the people that we trust are the people who ha do not have the right information. And how would we reprehend these kind of people? Because if we were the ones who reprehend them, because the, they were the ones in power, and we are the ones in the civic society, and it's, I don't understand why there's a reverse of roles that we, we need to adjust to them and they would be the ones who, who is in charge. Because we always have this problem that we did give the right support, the right education, but the social norm of the Philippines is um, the ones who has, who is a doctor, is the one who knows and not us who are the lay. How will we re reprehend these doctors without making without like um, pulling them back away from that advocacy. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, uh, that's uh, a major problem. <laughs> the uh, promotion practices of breast milk substitutes actually has made our health professionals the one discouraging breastfeeding and promoting the breast milk substitutes. And I think uh, we've had a lot of um, issues and problems uh, in this country because of that. So what the Department of Health is doing, and uh, we only started this year, is the health literacy advocacy, meaning that 
our empowering community participation and community members in order to improve uh, health-seeking behavior as well as health information gathering behavior, not just of the health professionals but also of the general public and be part of the, shall we say, policing mechanism. So if you have any experience with health professionals, actually that's a violation of the milk code. If they are not supporting breastfeeding and if they are promoting breast milk substitutes. And the FDA has an online uh, complaints form. Uh, the DOH also we have an uh, uh, no, it's not online, but you can email the Department of Health or go to the regional offices or call our hotline 7111002 for any complaints with regards to any health professionals that are not abiding by the law. Another question. Um, our interventions to promote breastfeeding are unang yakap and um, breastfeeding check. Um, but we have seen that according to the FNRI 2015, the priority government programs focus on invid individuals. So we have newborn screening, expanded pro program on immunization, vitamin A supplementation, diarrhea and oral rehydration, and deworming. These are the five uh, major government programs last 2015. But as you can see, these five do not cover infant and young child feeding as a program, as something that they really need to implement. Because I think, I am not sure if I'm correct, but IYCF is something like just an intervention, something that you need to do, but not a program that you need to, to comply to. Just like that, well, there, there is a strong um, advocacy on immunization because there is a program for it. And so with deworming, oral rehydration, salts. But how about breastfeeding? What is our program, aside from breastfeeding check, that, that really focuses on the support for mothers? Yes, um, uh, actually, I don't know where... Uh, the listing of priority programs is. But uh, for the current administration, we don't have a listing of priority programs. We have 57 health programs that the Department of Health is implementing. And uh, the Philippine Health Agenda outlines the guarantees. So uh, first guarantee for Filipinos is the guarantee from the triple burden of diseases. So that includes all the programs. Uh, we've outlined the uh, services that are provided to Filipinos from womb to tomb. Uh, what are health services, for example, and programs that will be implemented for infants, for young children, for school-aged children, for adolescents. So it's really looking at uh, all life stages as equally important in the provision of health services. Uh, and one of the uh, push that the Department of Health is actually uh, making for our local government partners is to include a breastfeeding indicator in the LGU scorecard. It's one of the 42 indicators in the LGU scorecard. So uh, although immunization is there and deworming and zero open defecation and safe water access is there, breastfeeding is one of the indicators in the LGU scorecard. And in my personal advocacy, I often tell people it's BBTRH, breastfeeding, blood program, tobacco control, and reproductive health. So those are what I continually advocate as my personal advocacies. Okay, we have time for one last question. I'm sorry for those who are eager to ask a question. The last question, please. Uh, 
Good morning. Uh, good afternoon. I'm Nona Andrea Castillo, lactation consultant. Uh, in 2007, we exposed the sale of 4 million cans of possibly contaminated wood rust and molds through a group of whistleblowers in, from uh, Wyatt. Uh, and we took the risk because at that time, the lawyer of DOH was murdered with his son. Now, now my question is, uh, with this uh, expose, we were able to put in warning labels on cans that nothing can replace mother's milk and at the, at the back there's a, a warning that says uh, there's, um, there are harmful microorganisms in the can. My question is when can we revert back to the, usual, the, the uh, older message which is breastfeeding is best for babies up to two years of age and beyond instead of the current one that was instituted under President uh, Pinoy uh, Benigno Aquino which was, which uh, is uh, the use of breast milk sub, uh, supplement must be upon the advice of health professionals, and it is very, very open to corruption among our health professionals. And uh, and uh, the next question is, uh, uh, I think uh, we can learn from our fellow ASEANs the indigenous diet that their their mothers are eating because right, Philippines is so influenced by the standard American diet. Uh, is there a move by the DOH to revert back to the indigenous diet that can help in sustaining breastfeeding? Thank you. Yes, uh, the Department of Health is open to any comments and suggestions. And we will we take note of your um, uh, comment so that we can uh, adjust some of our programs and initiatives. You know, uh, through the years, we see that it depends really on uh, the leadership of the Department of Health and of the health sector, how we prioritize and implement programs. But uh, uh, as always, and uh, uh, in uh, previous uh, initiatives, we are open to suggestions from all sectors. We're willing to work with all of you. Thank you. At this point, may we request the all members of this panel to give us one or two statements as a take-home message for all of us today. Let's start with Ms. Lotta Silwander. Uh, take-home message is Breast is best, uh, and, and make no mistake, it is in all situations, even in emergency situations. So do help us promote breastfeeding. It is the cheapest, safest, most effective health intervention we can have. It doesn't cost anything. We just need to make mothers breastfeed. And we will make a huge contribution to children's and mother's health. Thank you. Dr. Weiler? Yes, um, take home message. Uh, breastfeeding is always the best option. And we all need to work together to really change the culture and the practices here in the country and all around the ASEAN countries to make breastfeeding the normal because breastfeeding is always the best option. Dr. Fernando? Thank you. The advocacy on breastfeeding would definitely contribute uh, in the programs of ASEAN towards a healthier ASEAN community. So towards a healthier ASEAN community, breastfeeding advocacy has its importance. And lastly, from our Secretary of Health, Secretary Obiol. Again, uh, there's no substitute to breast milk. Breastfeeding is best for babies, and it's also good for mother's health, but it is not always easy. We find that um, we need a lot of... Uh, uh, other support mechanisms and the community, the whole of community and the whole of society initiatives to really uh, ensure that our women are breastfeeding 
and that our children get the maximum benefit from uh, breastfeeding and breast milk. So once again, our battle cry is all of us should be in this advocacy together. All for health, towards health for all. Achieve. Thank you. Sa Sabado, kita-kita sa Araneta breastfeeding ni Mami para sa healthy baby. Maraming salamat po. And good afternoon.